So welcome back to the channel guys. My name is Rahan and I'm a final year medical student and a content creator. Now in today's video, I hope to give you guys seven lessons that I've taken away from medicine in my seven years that I've been at uni and hopefully I can get that done in seven minutes. To give you a quick background, I did two extra years. One was a foundation year, um, which I did before starting medicine, and another was a year out, which I wanted to pursue interests in business and management. To quickly get into the video, my first tip is Pareto efficiency. And this principle basically recognizes that 80% of gains are brought about by 20% of the efforts. When you look at medicine, and you look at the whole process of studying, I do think that a small part of the study process gives us about 80% of our results. When we retrospectively look back, it's most likely the part which involves active recall or testing ourselves through question banks. Now, this leads me on to my next point, the string idiom. How long is a piece of string and how many hours do you need each day to study um, medicine? Well, it's a, it's a question that I still am yet to figure out. And it's very easy to get trapped into the cycle of thinking that you need to do more. But remember, your health and hobbies also matter. And I think that if you do find you're struggling to you know, maintain your hobbies or even medicine, then I'd consider highlighting inefficiencies in your day. So to give you an example, I noticed I was spending a lot of time on Instagram or my emails. So I just removed all of my emails from my phone and deleted the Instagram app. And this way I've got way more disposable time that I can allocate to, you know, whatever I want to do essentially. The next thing I want to talk about is creating your own path. Now, most people in medicine will follow the traditional career path and that's completely fine. However, as we're going on, we're finding more and more medical students with, you know, very multi-talented and that's a good thing. I've met doctors that have gone on to create 70 million pound health tech companies and others that have become, you know, part-time or full-time medical writers. I think that the career path that you choose is based on what you love to pursue rather than focusing on fitting in with the majority or feeling pressured to do you know a certain specialty i think as well diverse friendships are important i always recommend having a diverse group of friends for loads of reasons and i guess one of them is that you can talk to them about anything and everything other than just medicine but most importantly a lot of my junior doctor friends have actually complained about the mismatch in doctor's timetables and this is an issue when you've got a day off on a Tuesday but the rest of your group have a day off you know scattered across the, the week and if you've got a diverse group however most people in the general population work nine to five jobs so it's much easier to match up a time to meet imagine this is your life 365 days a year it's going to be much easier if you've got a group of friends that span multiple sectors I also want to talk about healthy competition. Now, medics are very competitive and studies have shown competition is healthy in moderate amounts. I guess it's an extrinsic factor which pushes us to perform better, but whatever it is, it's important to remember that we need to nurture healthy competition and be careful about you know competitive practices that may not be good for us. I'll give you an example. We've, you know, I've had a small group of close friends in, in medicine and our trio, we were competitive, yes, but we, you know, our studying was collective. We shared resources amongst each other. Now, we, we helped each other through, you know, teaching, but we also had friends who would hide resources from us or, you know, carry around large folders of their notes in the library and ask us the most niche of questions just to display how in-depth they had studied the subject. I don't know why. But I also want to talk about sports. I think everyone should take part in at least one sport. And I've put this in the middle, but this has single-handedly played one of the biggest roles in my well-being over the past seven years. I honestly couldn't recommend this enough. I think most people don't realize the impact sport has on your well-being, but also your friendships. Like, I've gotten so much closer to some of my friends through playing team sports. Yes, I also hate some of them on the pitch, but that's a different story. Now, try new sports out at uni and you never know what you're going to end up playing because I came to uni having played rugby for the school, 
But since I started playing football at uni, I've loved it ever since. I think the final point is responsibility. Now, I came into medical school as an immature and naive boy. If you're anything like me, then I guess we had a huge learning curve ahead of us. And I never really understood the level of responsibility a career in medicine holds. So from the way you talk to the way you dress, it influences people's perceptions of our prestigious profession. And as a result, professionalism is something that we struggle to, to grasp. Now, maybe I'll do a video on this sometime in the future, but for the vast majority of widening access cohorts, professionalism is something that we very rarely see in our upbringing. And as a result, there's a lot of discomfort when we come to terms with it and the institutions don't really help or understand our efforts. I guess I'd say keep pushing for people suffering from imposter syndrome. You might not have heard anyone talk about this topic, but just know that it does get easier as you go through the years and hopefully you get to, to grips with it. Now, these are my seven tips that I'd recommend to all medical students and hopefully they were useful. Thank you guys. Bye for now.